right, very good. Yeah, hello and welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi, being in Italy and having founded the Wisdom Factory together with my late husband, Mark Davenport. And we, our intention is to connect people and to explore topics inside uh, integral theory, spiral dynamics, and, you know, being more open to what is coming and trying to make sense of things. So today we want to talk about the difference uh, between integrative medicine and integral medicine. And with me is here Matt Dorsey. And before we talk about that, please tell me a little bit about you, about your background and, you know, yeah. how come that you are interested in this topic? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've been a licensed acupuncturist for about six years or so and been um, studying this stuff, you know, total since the, my, the beginning of my education for about a decade. Um, I uh, call myself uh, uh, an East-West practitioner. That's part of my, the title of my practice, East-West Alchemist, because um, from the very beginning, even though I was studying Oriental medicine, I felt like a, a deep interest in Western medicine at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I've described, you know, my training is being like uh, uh, essentially that we are medically bilingual as acupuncturists because so much of what we're required to study is Western medicine and physiology. And at the same time, you know, we have this very interesting, well, um, kind of back and forth where one class is in this inscrutable oriental medicine language and one class is in this language of pure biomedicine. And so that itself has almost an integral feel to it. Um, but a lot of the students really disliked uh, all the Western stuff, but I, I thought it was great. And I love, you know, basically learning two new foreign languages at once, biomedicine and, and oriental medicine. And um, anyway, uh, in the integrative medicine world, they're trying to blend all this stuff together. And I'm glad that I have been exposed to some of this material because um, uh, I, I would like to make contributions in the future to um, a form of blending this East and West and, and the holistic and the, the more mechanistic in a way that is actually um, integral and coherent versus, you know, maybe what we're trying to do right now, which is, which is much less so I would argue, especially at least in the US, I can't speak to other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's everywhere. I mean, I was in the situation that I tried to find the practitioner for functional, functional medicine here in, in Italy. And I, I had found two in addresses in Rome and one some, or two or three in, on, in North Italy. So, and even there, I mean, I didn't contact them yet. I wrote them an email and they didn't uh, respond. So I don't even know if they are still there. So <laughs> the, the experience in the medicine I have here that, for instance, an internist, uh, the doctor for the interiors, no, I went there for my uh, intestines and had a, a, a result from an, a heart um, research and this heart special, well, this research, yeah, heart specialist, he said, said, you better look up if something is going wrong inside with, you know. And so this doctor, internist said, heart has nothing to do with intestines. Uh, and I said, oh, oops. <laughs> Just to tell you what is the state here of, sure. of, of medicine, sure. you know, yeah. you get a, a sort of a plaster, a medicine for something without right. regard right. to to what else is in your body. Yeah. So they, they yeah. have no, not even the sense that the body is a system for them. Yeah. The body uh, right. is pieces. Right. So integrative medicine for me seems already to be a, a progress. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, you're speaking about what I, I just use the term, I don't know if I made this term up or if I read it, I can't remember, but artificial systems isolation. And I tell this to my patients a lot. I say, you know, our, our model is based on an attempt to isolate systems which cannot be isolated. And, and, uh, and you know, it, it's quite obvious that all these systems are interdependent, um, but, you know, because of specialization and it's, it's a double-edged sword. You, you want someone who is an expert in a particular organ or organ system, but at the same time, you have to have that, um, that view of the whole forest and not just be stuck in that one piece of bark on that one tree. And increasingly mm -hmm. that's what happens. And it also means you have eight different practitioners sometimes, you know, all just 
even just for the for your upper right quadrant, you've got eight people, and they're only looking at that one quadrant, and they're dividing that one quadrant up into eight things, which is insane. Absolutely, you know? and they don't talk <laughs> with each other. That's the thing. If at least they talked with each other, right. they're regarding you as a unity, but they they see only all your intestine, or your heart, or your I don't know your bones yeah. or whatever. <laughs> they don't see the rest. So can you explain a little bit what is integrative medicine and then we go over to- Sure, yeah. Well, um, you know, integrative is like functional. It's a term that, you know, um, has a lot of, uh, a lot of marketing potential. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a term that a lot of us use, you know, I'm an integrative practitioner or functional practitioner. And, um, you know, I don't know if, it, it, it's just the, it's the attempt to blend the holistic and the mechanistic, or, or we'll just call it biomedicine and more holistic modalities. It's attempt to blend the two. Um, you know, uh, classically, the, there's been a lot of opposition between the groups in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I, I don't know about other parts of the world, but, you know, for example, the American Medical Association was, there was a bit of a witch hunt um, mm -hmm. a while back, a few decades ago, or kind of toward the beginning of the 20th century, I'm told where they were trying to get rid of every other school. Uh, they were trying to get rid of all the chiropractors and the homeopaths and the herbalists, right? And, they, and there was a propaganda campaign that the only doctor is a medical doctor. And to this day, you know, there's lots of other doctors out there, but um, if you're not an MD, you're not a real doctor, right? And so there's a lot of bad blood, an oppositional yeah. model. Yeah. Uh, but there's increasing interest in alternative medicine and these holistic modalities. And so increasingly you see an attempt to integrate the two uh, where you, you know, you, you could go to, you know, a lot of these clinics, um, like Cleveland Clinic or places like that, where you'll see physicians, and then you'll also see, you know, down the hall, you'll have um, uh, an acupuncturist, or you'll, you'll have uh, mind-body exercises you can learn, things like that, and so it's becoming more mainstream, and it, it's a good thing, you know, they're trying to work together, for sure, um, but uh, I think, uh, I guess as we'll get into, um, you know, spiral dynamics has a lot to say probably about some of the challenges of, of potentially trying to mix those worlds. And, uh, and I think a lot of it is also um, uh, lower right quadrant uh, ec economics um, gets into the picture a lot. And, and, and in terms of is one system actually just co-opting another system and then, mm. you know, almost like a form of uh, medical colonialism or, you know, um, Orange trying to just say, hey, there's a good dollar in this. How do we take the best, of, take take whatever is most profitable, convert it to something that's more profitable, and and uh, and and just kind of steal it to some extent. Um, and I think it's the you know a lot of people in the holistic world are not super happy about that. In fact, even functional medicine itself is somewhat by some of us being accused of doing exactly that, mm. or or some of these practitioners. Um, but you could also see it as just another form of evolution where, you know, different things combine and then they, they come, become something new. So different yeah, ways to you do know, it. Um, for me, many of these, let's say new invention are caused by the initiative or the need or even the greed of somebody who is specially interested in that. But I think if these things then can benefit the people, uh, right. And this person is welcome to have founded it, have created it, because if he hadn't had whatever his motivations was, were, uh, hadn't had done it, people wouldn't be able to, to use it. So right. Right. for me, the motivations are not so important, but the result is important what it is there. And that there is a fight between all these directions, that's, that's clear. I mean, Honestly, the only alternative medicine is not good either, you know, because then they become fundamentalists and it's only right. this, no, only in exactly. this way, and the, the exactly. yep. normal medicine is completely rubbish. That's not good either. So it exactly. sort of, yep. uh, becomes an ideological fight, and this right. serve the patient, you know. Yeah, and that that ideological fight, you know, it it looks a lot like. Uh, well, it could be, you know, a green orange thing. Um, you know, again, uh, could be, yeah. yeah, that'd be one way of viewing it. Um, especially like what I see, for example, is that people have gotten up to uh, the green altitude and that they are completely disgusted with anything that reminds them of orange naturally. 
And that is all of Western medicine, basically, right? And Western medicine, obviously, is pure orange, essentially, you know, it, its roots are. Um, and so they become so reactionary against it that um, they might be ignoring red flags where they need to see a physician to actually see if something major is happening, right? Um, so, yeah, that's obviously just reactionary and irrational and not a good thing. At the same time, um, so many of the treatments that are given by Western medicine are so horrifically toxic that I can't necessarily blame people for wanting to avoid them, right? Because oftentimes Western practitioners, medical doctors are, are they're not trained in other modalities and they, they're not able to make an intelligent um, choice or, or present the, the options to the patient, you know, of like, you could take this drug with this amount of toxicity, or you could do this other treatment, which actually might be helpful. They, they present the case as this is your only option. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I, I heard that uh, if a doctor who is trained in, in a medical doctor here in Italy, who is trained in different modalities, often doesn't use it because he fears to be sued because uh, uh, when he doesn't do the traditional uh, treatment, then in the worst case, he can lose his, uh, his appropriation or how it is called in English, I don't know. Uh, but License. you know, the other thing is it needs for doctors personal interest and personal work to get to know something else because they get educated by the pharmaceutical uh, people who tell them this is good for that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there is a bit of a side effect, but oh yeah, okay. You know, and uh, the, their information is mainstream, mainstream media, you can say, you know, directly yeah. from the ph pharmaceutical industry. So. Mm -hmm unless they go and dig deeper themselves, nobody will really tell, tell them. Nobody is not true. I, I know people who are doing, um, um, how do you say, education on different modalities. My brother is one of those. He has a newsletter uh, and, and tells people the new findings, uh, people, normally his colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I read it too and find it interesting. And there are some medical real doctors <laughs> <laughs> who try to change uh, to change uh, the field, uh, even without adhering to something which is called integrative or whatever, mm -hmm. just by their own conviction or their own understanding that normal medicine, as it is still mainly practiced, is not necessarily a good thing for the patient. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, cause of death in the first ranks is abuse of, of, of medical drugs, you know, absolutely. right after death uh, of heart uh, diseases, right. I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I actually happened, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I, I, I didn't get a chance to tell you this, I actually work at a pharmacy um, as one of the, well, I'm called a wellness practitioner, um, but it's a, it's a very, you know, more integrated, progressive pharmacy. Um, it's a local pharmacy here in Austin, Austin, Texas and um, started by a really interesting guy who happened to be a pharmacist, but also believed in natural medicine. I believe his, his concept is to make that, make his pharmacies the, locate, the, the, the entry point into um, natural medicine. And so you go in for your prescription, but then you're ex exposed to naturopaths, acupuncturists, nutritionists, homeopaths, and there are the highest grade medicinal, like medicinal grade, uh, practitioner grade supplements and things like that, herbs and nutrients. And um, so, but I, I also have a deep interest in pharmacology and I have for a while and I probably, I definitely um, uh, am, am happy that I get to work with pharmacists, but some of the pharmacists who work here, I mean, and I quote, I wouldn't take most of this shit. I've heard, you know, you know, that was from a pharmacist who is, is absolutely brilliant and has a, you know, PhD in neuropharmacology mm -hmm. uh, and is also a doctor of pharmacy. And, and she said, I would not take the vast majority of this knowing what I know. So, you know, I, I like to work with people who, who are completely fully versed in that and to get some of their perspectives too, to know that, um, you know, uh, people who, it's important to be very um, fluent in, biomedicine. It's important to be as fluent as possible for every practitioner. So if your alternative, I, 
I always was trying to tell the other acupuncturists, you need to learn as much Western medicine as you possibly can. It is the dominant medical language here. And to, to seem competent, but not just to seem competent to your patients, but also to, to be able to converse with other practitioners, you need to be fluent in that. Um, so a little bit of a ramble there, but maybe- Yeah, no, it's, it, it's true because if you are only against and cannot explain why you are against, that doesn't right. really make sense. So you exactly. need to know what you are not wanting to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so I guess I get to you know, build, build my healthy orange maybe in a sense, you know? Um, mm -hmm. In, in the last decade as, as well as uh you know as well as the green um so and i see myself as kind of a bridge between those two in a sense because i can speak both those language you know i can talk to super way out there hippie types mm -hmm. who are just like completely in bat country right um and i get it like i've been there you know i've done a lot of psychedelics uh and uh i've had a lot of you know altered states uh, that were not induced by that either, just every day, you know, and things like that. And, and I totally get that whole vibration. And yet, you know, and the really technical, technically minded people who are scientifically literate and are fit fully at orange, um, I feel like I can talk to them. The problem is that, um, you know, scientific materialism is obviously, uh, you know, it's merely a stage. And, and a lot of those folks think that it's the end all be all, of course, being right there. And, um, you know, when I talk to that population, I try to, if, if possible, open them up a bit to the idea that maybe some of the things that they're seeing that they believe are 100% fact are actually culturally constructed, which is what, the, which is what Green has done for Orange and, and for everyone who can see it, is to say some of what Orange is seeing and everybody else, it, it is socially constructed or culturally constructed or, or whatever term you want to use for it. Um, and I went over a little bit of that in the, in the article or the, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The article uh, we can post, uh, underneath, um, the podcast. Um, yeah. And it, it wasn't even complete necessarily. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, Work in progress. Yeah, more to it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's go uh, a bit in the, in the difference. You say integrative yeah. medicine is oh, right. more or less the attempt to, to, to use both, but not yeah. yet, not yet really. How yeah. can you say in a conscious way? More, right. more sort of. Right. Yeah, yeah, and thinking. and this stems, and I'll just say, preface what I preface my answer, or or not my answer. It's not really a question, but preface my the next part by saying that where this came from um, is that so I'm in a doctoral program right now, also for Chinese medicine, and there's a. Uh, it's a very integrative program. It's, it's equipping us to, to be able to, you know, integrate into the Western medical paradigm. Um, but uh, one of the questions in, that we discussed in class was, uh, would you want to work in an integrative practice? Would you want to work with Western practitioners? And my knee jerk reaction was absolutely not because um, I would be placed under them uh, where they were calling the shots. And that's typically how it works. If you're in a hospital and you're an acupuncturist, you're not really very autonomous, um, much, much less so than the, the medical doctors would be. And MDs typically oftentimes will look down on people like acupuncturists. Um, we're kind of the bottom of the food chain in the United States. Yeah, you know, that's, like, that's you know, so it. <laughs> there's chiropractors and then acupuncturists are way down here. Um, but anyway, it's way of doing, yeah. It's but. one way of doing things, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was like, I'm not really interested in that, you know. Um, but then I thought, well, actually, and then I remembered Integral, and I was like, well, actually, yeah, that could be fantastic if it were people who are at yellow and above, who people who are at second tier, then that could be an absolutely beautiful thing because we would, we would have the perspective, the altitude to actually create something that, that was coherent together. Yeah, wonderful. And even if they are on the on the way to green, no, out of orange, you can be a sort of a catalyst to help them go, or even green to to yellow. You know, you right. can yeah. support that. While when you are outside the system, you how do you do that? You can't. You know, not in the same way. You have much more possibility to be helpful for evolution of medicine right. inside. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and, and so integrative versus integral. Um, so integrative is, 
poorly defined. Uh, it just means we're trying to blend the two, you know, but most of the time integrative medicine, if it's all under one roof, usually it's still, you know, orange dominating. Right. Um, and, you know, so for example, uh, herbology is a huge part of um, Chinese medicine and we have more training in, in herbology. Well, we're the only medical license in the United States other than nat naturopathy that has training in herbology. It's a huge part of our medicine. Um, but uh, in a hospital, the physicians get to determine whether the patients are allowed to take herbs or not. You know, that, that's how that would work, right? And that's, so what's interesting is that as a practitioner, uh, even though I'm a licensed medical practitioner, I'm not allowed to tell my patients whether they should take a, a pharmaceutical or not. But physicians, they, they basically have total dominion and, and therefore they're allowed to, to say whether their patients should take herbs or not, even though they have no training in herbology, no knowledge of it whatsoever, and can't comment intelligently based on their lack of training. <laughs> so they don't speak our language. We speak some of their language, you know, um, and, and, and yet they're, they're kind of almost pretending to speak our language. And that's, that's sort of the pattern, right? It's, it's like uh, you have a, a, a medical doctor, an MD, a physician who has standard Western medical training, which is excellent, you know, in, in those areas in that upper white, right quadrant, traditional orange fashion. Uh, but then let's say they go through some six month program that teaches them like natural medicine. And all of a sudden they're an expert on herbs, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or, or they, or they do a couple weekend courses and then they learn how to do acupuncture, right. With no knowledge of the fundamentals of Chinese medicine. Um, and then, you know, some of the, the practitioners who have real training in those domains get a little bit upset by that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, that's, that would be one issue. Uh, again, it's, it's almost like a co-opting or it's like a, it's still part of the whole turf battle thing, right. Where it's like, um, we have the best training. We're, we're at the very top of the food chain and therefore we get to do all of your medicine um, with almost no training, yeah. but you can't do anything that we do basically. Uh, and so that's still more of just the battling. And in an integrative setting, um, I feel like just based on the level of development of the people in it, um, it's, it's still gonna be uh, very limited. And I think the patient will suffer ultimately um, well, maybe that's, maybe that's overstating it, but um, com compared to, I think, where we could be in the future with a more coherent integral model, I think our attempts at integrative medicine are very limited, although could still be beneficial compared to patients never, never being exposed to any of this in the first place. Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. It's a step up from what's yeah. normally. Yeah. yeah, and it's a necessary step in our evolution, I guess. So. Yeah. So how do you see uh, integral medicine? You know, I wish I had like a, a grand vision I could explain, but, um, you know, uh, let's see. I was listening to, there's a man named um, something Dupuy. He does, uh, he's a therapist and he specializes in addiction treatment uh, from an integral approach. And I uh, just yeah, found yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he lives in Utah or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, it comes to uh, my mind. I know him personally. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just found his stuff today on YouTube. Yeah, he. I, I also and... we interviewed him many years ago already. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's and... also a musician and sings beautiful country music. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so well, he's an open, open-minded person. Nice. Yeah. Well, I think that. Um, yeah, he, see, he seemed great. Uh, I, I got a really nice nugget from one of his videos that I watched, which was uh, integral is holistic with a map. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like, there's holistic and then there's holistic with a map, right? And, um, and, and yeah, uh, I think that people who are at an integral level of awareness, um, if enough of us get together who have medical training, you know, we will advance the, the medical branch of, of what integral is possible of or, or is capable of rather. Um, but uh, to me, it looks like cross training, right? Because integral is all about cross training and, you know, looking at where you're underdeveloped and developing and, and uh, identifying where you are, you know, your cosmic address or whatever. Um, 
And so maybe, uh, you know, we do our best to, um, to find the def maybe deficiencies or, or areas of lower development of a lot of practitioners uh, based on their training. And we, we try to encourage them to, uh, to, uh, to train in those areas. Um, I'm being really vague right now and I'm rambling a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to remember where I was going. Perhaps you could uh, yeah. guide me. So <laughs> <laughs> what I understand with integral medicine that it's not only medicine in the sense of treating symptoms and finding causes in the body, but going to uh, the other areas of life. So the upper right. left quadrant, you know, to okay. see what is psychologically, uh, uh, what, what is the situation, the psychological situation right. of the person going to see the family, what is going on in the family, in the surrounding, in the social area. Yeah. And uh, um, it, I mean, in the structures, family, but also in the, in the relationships, no? what, uh, what is going on there. And also, you know, the, the bigger relationship to the world, to how, how people um, maybe now with all this cry about climate change, how do people deal with that? And maybe the helplessness or the anger or whatever you can uh, express or uh, get out of this topic, that may lead to, to symptoms and sometimes to serious illnesses. And so if you treat these illnesses uh, from a merely body standpoint, you right. can put uh, antibiotics and stuff, whatever you want, yeah. uh, it, it won't it will right. help maybe, but won't resolve the problem yeah. if you don't see the other areas of, the, life of the patient, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess another question is, um, I guess, and I don't know the answer, but um, if we were to look at, you know, an integral clinic, for example, does that mean that all of the practitioners need to be at second tier or above at an integral level of awareness or not necessarily? I don't think I don't think they have to. They have to be enough open-minded to to be there and to be part of the team. And I think uh, the main requirement would be the ability for collaboration and uh, be, being a, a good team together. Mm -hmm. uh, but that can still be green. They can even still be orange if they are open-minded enough to, to do their work, what they need to do in, uh, in this setting, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not becoming, um, wanting to be the boss now because now right. that's my right. or orange uh, attempt to be. Right. So, no, I don't think you need it. But what you need is the guidance, the, the, the leading team. They need to be in an... Uh, in an um, integral right. mindset. There is a clinic in Germany, in Bad Kissingen. Galuska is the name of the person who is leading it. And this is a, he is on the integral level. He has done many uh, relations uh, talks in Germany in conferences, but I think he did it last time also in Hungary. So there are clinics who are using the integral approach uh, to their work, and I think to remember that he said the main thing is that the the concept, and the structure is clearly integral. The people who are who are leading and uh, uh, supervising that they are clearly integral. But the single right. practitioner doesn't need yeah. to. But I'm I think in a surrounding like this, they will become. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. It would bring them up pretty quickly if that if yeah. if all of the founding people and the people who set it up were were at that level, I would think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about also being at this this stage is that you can see all the limitations of the previous stages, but you know, obviously, right? You see all the good and all the bad of all the different stages, and you're able to instead of reacting against any of them, you are able to figure out what is great about each of them and, and find the healthy in them, right? And then you're also able to openly 
kind of criticize the parts that are not so great. Um, well, not in front of the people who are at that stage, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be, <laughs> well, it well, wouldn't do any good, do. right? It'd be kind of productive. No, um, maybe if you find the right language. Right, right, yeah. You know? <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, I, I end up wanting to talk to the, for example, orange people and, and, and let them know, like I was saying earlier, do you understand how much of your, your training is biased based on just simple, simple economics of the, the, you know, these, these huge, huge lower right quadrant, you know, forces, right? We're talking about the pharmaceuticals companies um, and the insurance companies, how much of, of what you're doing is dominated by that um, and has skewed your, your picture of reality, right? Um, how, do you, how do you communicate that? Right. Uh, like, so one of the examples I gave in, in the, the thing I wrote was um, there's a straw man argument given against uh, a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, for example, nutrients and herbs and things like that, saying, well, there's just not enough research. <laughs> right? will never, the economic I mean, model will never permit there to be enough research. <laughs> what a beautiful straw man. Just knock that down with, you know, just, just flick it like that. Right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like your end will never be more than 30 people for a, a tiny supplement, you know, for an herb or something like that, because it's based on the intellectual property laws that allow you to patent something and, and to reap massive amounts of rewards and uh, financial rewards. And so you can afford to put $50 million of R and D into a pharmaceutical, but you can't do that with cat's claw or echinacea. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, I, I believe you could easily, probably create um, na completely natural products that would perform extremely well in, in large scale, you know, randomized clinical trials very well, but it'll never happen. Yeah, that's, uh, I find it actually really ridiculous, this argument that there is no, not enough research, not enough papers, because, uh, you know, that's also, I'm very much interested in the new, really new energies, no? and that's the same thing. Uh, people, uh, the public universities don't invest in it, you know, and so uh, right. if, if, I mean, some universities do, but not in the same amount yeah. as uh, normal physics. And so uh, you don't have the funding to do the, the, the deeper research and then you get blamed that you haven't done it. Yeah. How can you do it? No. Right. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah, say that the cat bites in its, in its own tail, sort of. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, uh, so, you know, um, the, the other thing is, again, that the, 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 the w when you haven't quite gotten to that green holistic way of thinking yet, um, you tend to overlook side effects, you know, uh, from a more holistic vantage point or altitude a side effect is a little bit more serious because you really deeply appreciate that you're causing, that you're disrupting the entire system with a side effect, right? Yeah. And, and the side is, effect is an indication that the system is being disrupted. Yeah, and it's not a side effect. It's really right. a main it's effect. effect. Right, it's, yeah, exactly. I, I, I heard uh, also from my brother who is doing this sort of research, um, when you start to, to buy into pharmaceutical treatments, then the first um, um, pharma, pharmaco, how do you say it? The first drug is uh, creating the next illness. And then you take another yep. drug yep. and this is creating yep. the next right. illness. Right. It's not against drugs. When it's an acute uh, situation, you can course, take drugs. Course. I'm yeah. talking about yeah. the drugs which people take for years and years right. and years. They are causing Most other illnesses and that is a whole, yeah. a whole, oh, yeah. uh, bunch of illnesses which come in the end you have 20 drugs and you are ill because yes. you don't yeah. get healthy because yeah. of that you know and, yeah. and the opposite and people don't want to see that I mean yeah when I go to a doctor and they ask me uh, I, I very rarely go only if I have to and they ask me what uh, do you have diabetes do you have a uh, high blood uh, pressure, do you have this and this? I say, no. And they look, oh, in your age, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, statistically, that's pretty improbable. Yeah. Um, you know, by the time in the US, if you're 60 or above, 
if even if you're maybe 50 or above, you're you're on at least four drugs on average, probably four or five. I tell you a story. When my husband came uh, over, he came from America, and he was uh, the end, yeah, mid end 60s, and he came with a bag of drugs. And I said, "What's it? What is that for? This is for this. Do you have it? Reflux. Do you have reflux?" This is for blood pressure. This is for diabetes. This is for, I said, you know what? Let's do an experiment. Don't take any. We, we measure blood pressure every day and we measure sugar every right. day and right. we see what happens. And nothing happened. He didn't have either, <laughs> either diabetes, nor high That's blood funny. pressure, yeah. no reflux, nothing. He right. just had right. to take the medicines. And so he never took them again, you know? Well. <laughs> You know, and, and I, I do have to wonder, um, I'm not saying that there's any, any nefarious uh, individual saying that we want people addicted to our pharmaceutical drugs and that it's part of some overarching plan. Who knows? Um, maybe, maybe Who not. Knows? I can't. It, maybe, it's pointless to argue on that. Um, but I will say that certainly it's a great business model, um, you know, to get the doctors, you know, throwing out a prescription um, after talking to a patient for nine minutes and getting them on something very easily, but then well, who being gets, very- Who gets nine minutes? Who gets well, you know, minutes? if you're talking to your GP, um, it's a pretty short visit sometimes. Yeah, I, I want to say I often get yeah. much less. I get- Oh, sick, yeah. You know, so- Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> and so you put somebody on a medication at the drop of a hat, and then physicians are very reluctant to take people off of medications, many, many of them, right? Obviously, some of them are short-term, but most medications people are put on, they're put on indefinitely. You know, like give someone an antidepressant. When do I stop taking this? Uh, never, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or blood pressure medication. When do I stop taking this? Oh no, you take it forever. Really? Yeah. You know. And that's exactly what, what goes wrong with medicine because uh, also the cholesterol uh, medicines. And so they try to address the symptoms hoping magically that the illness goes away right. instead of yeah. going down and looking what exactly is the problem yeah. they're not interested yeah. in the problem they are right. sort right. of cleaning the surface surface right. yeah? exactly yeah and, and yeah it's 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 not for me that's not medicine that's not not maybe medicine but it's not making peeping he people healthy you know yeah yeah it's not about health it's uh, about I, pretending to function normally. And this, you know, sounds a little bit like trying to get people, yeah, I don't want to go into yeah. conspiracy yeah. theories. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, no, understandable. Um, well, you know, there's, there's a great like million dollar word that I learned um, a while back that I put into one of my presentations and it, it's a very fancy word uh, that no, almost no one has heard of. It's etiotropic, E-T-I-O tropic. Uh, etio meaning, uh, so etiology in, in medicine, we say, has to do with, you know, the actual cause or how, how a disease arose in the first place, right? Root cause of a, of a disease, right? Um, and then uh, tropic, obviously, you know. Uh, so etiotropic means, you know, something that which addresses a, a treatment which actually addresses the root cause, just a fancy word of saying root cause medicine. And um, if you look at the, the Western medical treatment of chronic disease, it is primarily non-idiotropic and is primarily palliative. And that is really just a fact. Um, you know, uh, clearly, if someone has high, hypertension, for example, great example, um, then, you know, uh, manually overriding um, the system in the body which, uh, which, which regulates water metabolism through the kidneys, you know, which is what ACE inhibitors do um, partially or what diuretics do, has absolutely nothing to do with the cause whatsoever of their hypertension, clearly, you know. Um, but it's seen as an acceptable way to treat, you know, because it, it gets immediate results, you know, and it requires zero effort on the part of the patient, right? Um, but I was going to say earlier that, you know, not only does Western medicine at its, at its worst, which is what we're talking about, uh, ignore the other three quadrants largely, but it largely fucks up the upper right quadrant horribly. To be to be totally frank, you know, if, I mean, it, when when it comes to chronic disease treatment, obviously when it comes to surgeries and and inter, major interventions uh, to save your life, it's fantastic, and that's what it really specializes in. 
but with these lifestyle chronic diseases, especially in psychiatry, anything like that, um, you know, even just even just within its own domain of upper right quadrant, it still is ignoring subtle energy. It's ignoring nutrition. Um, Absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, what can you uh, <laughs> so, envision? <laughs> where shall, shall we go? Where shall yeah. society go? Where will you go? Uh, yeah. At least, where do you plan to go? Where do you think to be in, let's say, five years? And what impact will you have then? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, where will I be in five years? I don't know. I, I don't know whether or not I'll end up working in, you know, in some kind of a team setting. Um, although part of me thinks that might be great, you know, if I find the right people, create something. Um, I do have a dream. So I'm also, I'm deeply, deeply into the clinical nutrition side of things and the supplement side of things. I've been working in the supplements industry for about 10 years studying it and using it also obviously with patients and i do have one dream to at some point in my life start my own supplements company um mm -hmm. uh with the with the idea of it being sort of mission based to some extent and and having um having something built in uh from the ground up where funds are are uh from profit or donated to some some kind of a uh, a worthy cause of some sort um but, uh, you know, um, I hope to make contributions within Integral uh, in the future because uh, uh, re regarding how we can move forward and what kinds of, uh, and how we can teach this. So maybe at some point I'll figure out how to, um, you know, start teaching this to other alternative medical practitioners so they can maybe, uh, you know, since, since that's really my community, um, so they can kind of upgrade their perspective a bit and do some more cross training, maybe learn some more Western medicine, for example, mm -hmm. um, and learn how to better talk to their patients who might not be, you know, at the, the green level that they're, you know, they would like them to be and things like that. Um, I, I naturally see myself getting more and more into to this combination of integral and medicine in the future. Um, I, I really have no idea exactly what the universe has in store for me. Uh, so I can't say, you know, it's hard for me to plan really hardly anything more than a month out. Uh, but uh, I am excited to see where all this goes for sure. And I, I do look forward to meeting more, pe meeting more people in this, um, in this, uh, this community. And, uh, and, it, and like I was saying earlier, it's really refreshing to talk to anybody who, who has these understandings and speaks this language. Um, so yeah, excited to see where that goes. Yeah, I, it would be good if you could take on this task in the integral community uh, together with a few other people who are already there interested in health and healing because it's not a big topic everybody talks about politics right psychology relationships and stuff like this but yeah health and healing even nutrition very little i know in yeah. germany a person i did uh, interviews with him too um i uh, today i forget names yeah, I, I will write it down under the <laughs> under the, the video. Um, who is doing integral nut nutrition and mm -hmm. is holding workshops on that for people, oh, cool. but also for, for other. He's in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for instance, as soon as you are ready, go to the conferences, offer your uh, approaches. It's really needed. It's so under, under how do you say, represented in the mm -hmm. in the community there's yeah. even more art than than health and healing at, in my opinion what i yeah. see so uh, i would well, that's, that's no i didn't i didn't realize it was underrepresented to that extent yeah i i, I, um, I it's not i'm i'm aware of it, two people at the moment lynn yeah. feldman and lynn fuentes huh? who are doing that i mean i'm not i don't know everybody logically no but uh I'm not really very aware of that. And also on the conference, it's, it's hardly anybody talking about health and healing and yeah. medicine. And so you have a, a big chance to, to be the, the, how do you say, the bringer of good news. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Good and, 
and, uh, and, and, you know, with, with the really out there woo woo stuff, you know, even within the integral community, I'm sure there's different lines that people draw, right? I'm sure there's probably, people are probably split on certain topics too, like vaccines, for example, right? Um, my sister has vaccine damage um, from a very, very early age. She's one of the casualties. Does it mean that they're all bad? No. But, uh, you know, I have a different perspective on that. I would like, it'd be interesting to see on some of these topics that are, you know, um, typically uh, hotly debated by some of the other, uh, you know, some of the green and the orange folks and blue, et cetera, you know, how, how that plays out within the integral community, some of those, those hot topics, you know. Um, so I, I would be interested in that, in that too. It's and again, that the challenge, right, is to talk about this stuff without going into a reactionary mode, right? Or if you do, then learn from it, obviously, right? That's, that's the idea. Like, oh, that's interesting. I apparently, you know, like I still have orange allergies, right? Because most of my memories of Western medicine, maybe all of them from a child are all traumatic, horribly. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's something I'm currently working through. You know, and I'd be interested to see maybe other people in the community, if they have allergies, you know, regarding um, certain aspects of medicine and how it's practiced and how they're working through that to become more well-rounded in, in healing that aspect too. That'd be interesting. Yeah, and it would also be interesting to see how we talk about these things, you know, if being aware, if we have opinions and think this has to be like, blah, 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 this is an opinion, or if we talk of our own experience, what it did to us or to a friend, or as you said, to your sister. Mm -hmm. And then from there, start to think about it. Uh, for instance, I had a fight with, with my, my doctor here because I was bitten by a tick. And I, the, I took it out, but the, the head stayed in. And so it, it was an inflammation, you know. And yeah. I saw in the internet, Italy is no danger of uh, any infection, neither of the right. two, which can come from ticks. And yeah. uh, the best thing is to just wait. And when the inflammation comes, then you get it out easy, the, the head. And I happened to, to have to go to my doctor for some other reason. And I asked, oh, just, I'm here. Could you take it out? And he got so angry on me. He said, you have to take antibiotics. I said, I don't. Why? <laughs> Why should I? Yeah. Da, da, da. And he tried to instill fear. If you don't do it, then you yeah. have to go to the hospital. Right. I said, this is not a way to, to, to treat people. Right. If exactly. you say, uh, then give me an argument. Why should I do it? Right. I told you before I have problems with my intestine. <clears throat> yeah. You should know that antibiotics um, make additional problems to the intestines. Right. So right. Then I should take <clears throat> a medicine which is creating me problems only because he said five times in 30 years, it has happened to him that the person had to go to the hospital, that the, the probability Right, zero, right. zero, zero, uno, right, right. to get a, a serious right. infection of it. Right, right. And for that, I should take the medicine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've decided I changed the doctor. Here is a system that good. you have to oh, officially great. change because yeah. it's, I found yeah. one who is a, at least knows something about uh, uh, homeopathy, homeopathy and uh, supplements because I'm taking supplements. My nice. brother is uh, started with a company for supplements, vitamins and minerals. Nice. I take them for 10, 15 years or so. So um, yeah. if you tell that to the doctors, <laughs> throw it away. It's oh, oh yeah, just expensive oh. urine. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so just to tell you how um, limited the information is you get and I think when you said that you are alternative practitioners, <laughs> they need to know the other part to be able to give arguments instead of uttering oh, yeah. belief systems. Yep. Because yep. as long as we are on the level of belief, which we non-practitioners have to be at the end because we don't have the training, yeah. but they need to know what they are against. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's why I you know, I try to learn as much pharmacology as possible. When I'm talking to a patient slash client, um, depending on if it's acupuncture patient or if it's a nutrition client, that's why I use those two terms, it's confusing. But anyway, when I'm talking to a client, um, 
you know, if I'm talking about a certain medication and, and why you might want to talk to a pharmacist or talk to another practitioner, another doctor about whether this is good for you to take or not, obviously I can't say don't take this, but I'll say talk to somebody about this. I can at least talk to them about some of the, the pharmacological action of it, right? And say like, so based on my knowledge of this, um, this, this pharmaceutical, you know, uh, also has this specific side effect of destroying mitochondria within your body, for example, which is something that some of the antibiotics do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is why that might, you know, might be something you might want to know about because that's, that's very important part of the cell, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, brain and heart function. And so you, you want to, you know, people are used to their practitioner speaking the language of orange, uh, most, most Americans, you know, still. Now, there's some that are, just hate it, the ones who are at full, full green. They don't want that at all. They would prefer I just only talk about chi all day, or they want me to talk about, you know, and, and all that great Chinese medicine stuff that I love. They don't want me to talk about that. But the average person, you know, because I am competent, fairly competent in some of these other modalities that are purely Western medicine and understand them, they will actually really listen, you know. As opposed to just saying, oh, you know, um, the, those, uh, that category antibiotics, you know, I, I heard that, uh, that they can be really toxic and, you know, you should be careful. I'll say, you know, quinolones, specifically ciprofloxacin and, you know, levoquin, they can inhibit an enzymatic pathway that is actually within the mitochondria because mitochondria and bacteria are structurally almost identical. And a lot of people will actually uh, go into heart failure who already have a heart weakness after they take them, for example. Mm. Um, something you should probably know about. So that competency is really important. So I was, I was kind of surprised by how, how, how few acupuncturists in school, acupuncture students in school wanted to learn about all the Western stuff. Um, as I was just like, this is really important. Like we need to know this, we, especially if you want to be taken seriously. Yeah. Um, but, but this yeah. needs probably already the jump into, <clears throat> into second tier because when you are full in green, you believe in green and, you right. know, and then yeah. you think you are superior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the right thing, the only right thing. And so yeah. no need to learn more, no? Exactly. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you, you know, something you said earlier jogged my memory from something I wrote in, in the document, in the, the, the essay. Um, and when you were talking about your, your doctor speaking to you almost as if you were a child or, you know, yeah, in a sense, you've got a parental role, right? And I think that, you know, part of orange's shadow, again, going back to orange and then blue uh, or amber, whichever one, you know, whatever term you want to use, um, you know, uh, it, it, almost there's a priesthood within orange, you know, the scientific priesthood, right? Yes. Um, uh, Rupert Sheldrake does a great job of talking about that in uh, Science Set Free or yeah. the Science Delusion, depending on what country yeah. you're in, right? Yeah. Um, so the, the scientific clergy. And, uh, you know, I think it's interesting that originally the role, it was the, the role of, um, of spiritual leader and, and, and healer were one in, in shaman, you know, and then they kind of got split, right, more and more. But in, in a sense, uh, you know, that whole idea of um, you can only get the ultimate truth from me. You have to go through me and I take on a parental role. Maybe Orange almost inherited that to some extent, trying to take over uh, and trying to, trying to replace Blue. Yeah, if we uh, said in Germany, the gods in white are the doctors. Nice, yeah, that's great, I love it. it what, what would be the, how would you say that in German, the gods in white? Uh, got in vice. Got in vice. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's interesting, you know, and I, I found myself when I was in school, sometimes starting to do that, just when I was interning in school as the practitioner, right? Just based on things I had seen modeled. And then I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the one who tries to scold my patients um, and, and tries to, you know, parent them. You know. Yeah, but you know, on the other hand, when we talk about integral, when I see here in Italy, most people are, let's say, even in purple still, and uh, red and blue. So maybe for those, it's even the right language, that they believe oh, yeah, the doctor knows everything, and there's right. the authority, and they can 
um, reverse their own responsibility on somebody else. Uh, maybe it's even mm -hmm. a good thing, but with me, no, you know. <laughs> so. right. Well, well. Also, then for for those folks who are at those levels, you know, how do they shop around and find the right God, the right Doctor God? You know, because if they're going to follow all of them, you know, and not question any of them, they better find a good one that's not going to screw them up. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, but they don't even think so far. The, the, you, the choice of the doctor is you have two or three to choose from and you right. take one where people say he's good. And yeah. you, know, you don't even yeah. talk with him or her yeah. before you, right. you choose them. Only people say, oh yeah, it's good, good doctor. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I know it's, it's tough. Um, I, I think also uh, having these different cultures exposed to each other in the right situation could be easy, it could be fruitful. So I would like to see more just open discussion. I don't know how to facilitate that specifically, but I, you know I've just often wondered what would happen if you had a room full of medical doctors, chiropractors, naturopaths, and acupuncturists, and then had them all talk with each other. Uh. <laughs> oh, maybe there are conferences like this around. Yeah. There, there are people who are active in this field, so <clears throat> maybe you find it out, and then I'm I'm wondering where you will be in five years. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm meantime, wondering that too. In the meantime, I have the project to connect you with the other two practitioners. Well, thank you. Both in America. I was so much oriented towards America because of Mark, who didn't speak. Uh, German at all and Italian a little bit and so um, main part of the people I know are English speaking so I would love to find somebody also in Europe to talk about it maybe my brother my brother is not integral in his mindset yet but he is a green informed orange with I think that's it because the ideas he has are let's say anti-mainstream <laughs> uh -huh. from the right. beginning on, yep. you know, yep. and, uh, but he is not yet in an integral mindset. Uh, he, he did some courses. I sent him to this doctor in, I don't I get his name, in Berlin. I connected those two. I don't know if there is something um, uh, coming out of that, but he is, let's say, doing a good job and if you want i can connect you with him too i don't know if he has uh, absolutely no i would love that people in in america yeah and I'd, let's see part of the wisdom factory is getting people together so we we try to to do that that's great yeah um thank you for that for any connections that's great i you know this is the, really the first time i've gotten to connect with anyone in this in this uh in this uh group at all so yeah, that's it's really cool. Um, Thank you. That is, it's for me, it's a it's a, a satisfaction that I can do that. You know, to to, yeah. to uplift people by, you know, sharing my knowledge and my questions. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know what we could do together to plan in five years get the integral community a little bit more excited about the side topics which are yeah. not the main topics sure yeah i mean you know politics is cool and certainly you know uh if i'm gonna if i'm gonna listen to anything about politics i would like to listen to the daily evolvers you know representation of it that's a much better way to listen to uh what's going on politically than anything else that i found yeah. just getting into it recently it's great but but yeah no the health health is such a big deal and you know, I do wonder also about the exposure to alternative medicine of people in the integral, you know, world and what they think of it. And if they have found, you know, practitioners who are at an integral level of awareness who practice, uh, you know, some of these holistic modalities, or if they've only been exposed to people who are at green. Um, and if that has also colored their picture of it, whether they know it or not. And, and, uh, Probably. yeah, Probably, yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and also, you know, how, how many, you know, when somebody talks about uh, vitamins don't do anything, herbs don't do anything, things like that, you know, I take a more orange approach and I say, well, how many scientific papers on herbs have you read? Just, you know, not, again, that's kind of a, 
be, being a, a little bit a uh, little bit pugilistic about it but it, you know but like it's important to ask somebody if, if somebody's going to comment on something like that you know how much scientific literature have you actually attempted to read on that topic on that particular vitamin or or on that particular holistic modality if you want to come at it from a purely orange scientific standpoint you should probably at least have done a literature review or looked or done done some trying to search for it so you can talk about the science that may or may not exist and maybe also look for who was sponsoring the research because oh, if yeah. it's the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry you can imagine what the result oh, yeah. was. even in nutrition you, you know I, I read a study a while back that said uh you know if you eat three eggs with a meal that your vitamin e absorption goes up by several hundred percent and then i you know i looked and it was done by the american egg board and then I looked at, at the actual way that they were analyzing vitamin E and I realized, well, the, the metric they were using, you could argue, might actually be interpreted as a, a lack of absorption into the cells, depending on how you look at it. So, you know, yeah, even with the nutrition stuff, especially if it's, if there's a large industry behind it, you know, agricultural industry, for example, yeah. with something like if somebody says carrots are good for you. I don't think there's a big carrot out there, but if it's something big like eggs or, you know, dairy or meat or something like that or you know any of those big industries maybe yeah. almonds i don't know i'm not sure which foods are big enough to have that kind of influence but yeah you always have to be careful absolutely yeah yeah oh wonderful matt i i thank you for this conversation it was really, yeah. really igniting and i sure. thank first you. of all wish you good luck to go on with your enthusiasm and not get dimmed down by the attempts of people who say uh that's acupuncture oh by the way acupuncture i want to say there were um, it's some years ago i hope they are still doing it a major insurance company in germany made a study on acupuncture acupuncture in comparison to pain medication and mm -hmm. they found out that acupuncture had at least twice as much results than wow. pain medication and then they uh, decided to finance that too as a treatment but i don't know if they maintained that in the meantime it was only mind-boggling when i heard that it's maybe 10 years ago or something ah that's excellent i've never heard of that yeah huh. that was yeah if, if you find that study uh if you wouldn't mind sending it to me that'd be great yeah i don't know if i find the study i remember the the news about that oh okay gotcha uh, so cool. but well no, that's that's good to hear that's encouraging <laughs> yeah. Even if it's placebo, like they say, hey, it, it, if placebo is better than medication, go with the placebo. Yeah, exactly. Especially if it's twice as good. That's what there are many studies on placebo effects, you know. So, yeah. okay, for today, I think it was good, and I. Yeah, it's uh, great. Do you have an? In, do you have already a website or something? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Main web, main website is called eastwestalchemist.com. That's the name of my, uh, it's a consultation practice. Uh, so I just work remotely via telephone or Skype um, uh, doing consultations for people. And it's got my bio on, on there and everything. So I can work with people wherever um, to get them on a protocol for healing chronic disease. And the other one is nutrientdepletions.com. Um, and that's actually, it's a shortcut to part of my main website. It's just a domain that takes you to a database where you can type in a pharmaceutical drug and it will tell you um, which nutrients that drug might be um, uh, depleting from your body. And it's just a free resource you can use. For that. Oh, that is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I use two different books, two different reference books written by pharmacists and I just made a little database and it's searchable. And you just type in the generic name of the drug and it tells you the nutrients that might be depleted. And that's nutrientdepletions.com. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Very, yeah. very, Thank very you. Good. This was great. It's, yeah, it's, it's really lovely talking to you. And you too. Uh, Bye -bye. See you again sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm.